Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It's Son of a Gun Gourmet. And in this video, I'm going to go over how to make a flavorful braised beef short rib. And I'll compare it to the sous vide one from my previous video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's start cooking. I'll only be using half of this short rib, so the first thing I'm going to do is split it. I looked the cut over, and there wasn't any silver skin that needed to be trimmed off. Just a nice layer of fat that's going to sear beautifully, render down, and give this braise some great flavor. So I just vacuum sealed it to keep it fresh and store it for when I cooked it the next day. To get this ready for braising, we'll start by giving it a really good sear. Get a saute pan ready at medium high heat. You'll want it to be at least a few inches tall so it can hold the braise. And while our pan is getting hot, we'll season up the short rib with some kosher salt and some freshly ground black pepper. You don't need to season up the whole countertop like I did, but just make sure you get it on all sides of the meat. Add some oil to your hot pan and make sure it gets everywhere, then lay the short rib fat side down. Make sure it has good contact with the pan for a perfect sear. Sear all sides of the short rib to caramelize the meat and fat and develop that beautiful depth of flavor that makes a braise delicious. Now would also be a good time to start preheating your oven at 300 degrees. Contrary to popular belief, searing meat before braising doesn't actually seal in moisture and make it juicy. It's all about the great flavor a sear adds. Once you're done, pitch the excess fat that's been rendered off. Fat is flavor, but too much fat will make the dish greasy. Deglaze the pan with one cup of red wine. Next, I'm gonna add three cups of homemade beef stock, but low sodium store-bought stock will work fine. Then add half a bunch of thyme, five cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of black peppercorns, one teaspoon of whole cloves, two teaspoons of juniper berries, three bay leaves, and a pinch of salt. Your braising liquid should taste seasoned, but not fully seasoned if that makes sense. You need some salt, or as the meat cooks, the salt will be pulled out of it and it will become bland. But too much and as the braising liquid reduces down, it will become too salty. Learning this balance is a part of learning how to braise, and it just takes a bit of practice to get right. Once it comes up to a boil, cover it and let it cook in the oven for two hours. And while it cooks, we can get everything else ready. Peel half a pound of carrots and parsnips and cut them into large uniform shapes. In general, root vegetables are great for braises. They have a relatively long cook time and take on other flavors quite well. And an herb that goes great with both root vegetables and braises is rosemary. Chop the leaves of one sprig and set it aside. Next, measure out one cup of barley. Rinse it under cold water to get rid of any impurities. And after the short rib is cooked for two hours, we're gonna take it out of the oven and check it. At this point, we're hoping that it's about two thirds of the way done. Set aside the short rib and strain the bracing liquid. I like to do this because the brace has already extracted good flavor from the herbs and spices. But I don't want to have to try to pick out a bunch of peppercorns and whole cloves hiding among the vegetables and barley. Pour the strained braising liquid back into the pan and add the remaining ingredients. And if at any time the braising liquid looks like it's over reduced, you could always just top it up with a bit of water. Once all the ingredients are mixed in, I'm going to put the short rib back into the pan fat side down and leave the lid open just a crack. We're going to cook this for one more hour. That way the barley should be done properly, the meat will be fall off the bone tender, and the vegetables will be cooked but not mush. 
This dish to me is the definition of comfort food. It's the perfect meal to warm up with on a cold day and it smells and tastes amazing. To serve, I usually just cut it in half and take the bone out. It's very tender, so when cutting, just let the knife do the work. So after getting to taste both the braised and sous vide short rib, I could honestly say both of them have great components, but overall as a dish, I believe this one is better. Done properly, all the ingredients cooking together for a few hours will really bring out great flavor from each component of the dish. But that sous vide one was ridiculously tender, and the sauce was incredible, just not as much of a marriage of ingredients. And to finish this dish, just garnish it with gremolata, the same recipe from the previous video. In the end, I'd say both dishes were absolutely delicious, and I'd highly recommend both recipes and methods. And that's it for this one. I hope you try one or both of these recipes soon and tell me which one you think is better. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on cooking.